hey guys welcome with hello to this video i hope you are doing good uh, right now i'm planning actually to make an oauth 2 integration so oauth 2 by google so with what or 2 i'll try to get my token and with that token i'll try to uh, i'll try to i try to schedule events in the calendar google calendar so it's like google calendar integration sort of uh, trial right so let's see how far can we reach with that so uh, this is not a tutorial this is me coding more uh, more of like me coding uh, first thing first what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll, we'll initialize a project you know we can use pnpm express google apis and that's what you call oauth to in google uh this is how you, this works okay so you basically kind of you basically kind of like have a scenario okay you basically hmm. but i want the code for javascript web apps server side web apps yeah that's what i want and that too for node.js that's what i exactly want so as an example of how to do it in node.js so if i go to source if i go to apis Okay, Google APIs or TS, whatever. Okay. Google API Node.js client. Is that an example or is that a library through which we can do it? I think this is a library. Uh, yeah, there's a dedicated library for the, doing this. You can call like Google APIs. Okay, that's the thing which we require. Uh, let's add Google APIs. So I've added Express and Google APIs. Ex Express for handling all the HTTP calls, like for for the authentication, and Google APIs for actually handling with Google stuff, right? So yeah, let's go ahead. Let's say code, and now we'll have SRC. No, the spelling is wrong of SRC, right? Let's change the theme. I'm not liking this theme for some reason. React, you know, this is cool. Okay. So uh, let's name it like index.js, right? Import express. Import express from express. I uh, will think about other stuff later on. Okay, so we have done this, this port definition. So we can say app dot listen on this particular port, and then we can um, I might do this, and then we can log that server started on port whatever port this is right so yeah this is this is a simple express application now the first step is actually to get the user log into google so we'll have like simple app dot uh, maybe app dot a get request slash google right and and we'll get few things over here we'll get a response we'll get, we'll get a request and a response and maybe something so we actually have to redirect the user from here to whatever the whatever the link which is there i mean in which you want to redirect the user so so kind of like this what you can do is you just have okay these are the apis available i think i have to learn oauth or to client uh, this is how you handle OAuth so you actually have to generate OAuth, OAuth URL let's keep this side so let's see how can we actually generate one OAuth URL so you know we can say 
const url is equal to auth to client so we'll have to have to import this so we'll have to import something from google apis now what do you want is we want this google thing from that and i think uh, so we'll have to construct something called uh, auth to client is equal to new google dot auth dot uh, o auth two right and then i don't know so we need three things first is the uh, so let's 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 for now let's do it like this node dot uh, no process dot env dot uh, client id right process dot env dot uh, client secret right and then process dot env dot uh, redirect url okay uh, so these uh, these things you have to set up and now uh, how do you do that basically you go to your uh, google account i think give me a second i'll have to okay so uh, you go to your google developer console right and you go to this place call your google core developer console you go to this place called credentials right after that you first of all you create a project let's name it uh, oauth experiment okay whatever this is so let's create this so we basically have created an organization right now that allows us to do so yeah so we have uh, we have this project created that's kind of cool so the next thing what we have to do is we have to create a credential for this project and how do you do that is basically uh, remember oauth screen will be for about your application whatever Okay, create credential and we'll create OAuth client ID. Okay, so that's OAuth client ID. And the next step, what we have to do is we have to actually own uh, no organization. <laughs> now we have project no. Yeah, that's so create. How do you create setting up OAuth 2.0? How to do that? So okay, man, but how do you how do you create one? Uh, configure consent screen what's that so uh, only available to user within your notion you do not need to submit your application for it will tunnel this like i just want to learn this stuff oh can you <laughs> it doesn't let me select that <laughs> no that's kind of funny app name dope app support email id yeah just whatever my email id there's no logo there's no domain do you need anything else can i can i save and continue developer contact information that's the same email id over here by the way that's not a real email id that's like what i use for a lot of my apps and projects so if you want to guys want to message me you can definitely do that on this particular thing okay so i'll just paste this there and save and continue right and then it's like this so uh, so it says add scopes so now uh, what I want to what I want is calendar there's no calendar as a scope man so I want profile of course that's something which I would like to have so the personal info on Google profile also update right and now I think uh, save and continue, right? I've added the non-sensitive scopes and then the test users, I could add my own email address, I think. And, you know, we're good to go, I think. And where to save this, is there anything like, okay, we've added this and save and continue. And then we have all these information back to dashboard and let's go to credential then let's create a credential and then api key uh no not this credential oauth client id the application type okay this is my api key generated so uh 
uh, whatever okay let's let's forget about that it's a web application and uh, the name is this uh, whatever authorized origin so to authorized origin will be right now localhost uh, I think localhost is allowed by default so I don't need to add it so I can delete this stuff and then the redirect URL will be uh, https double dot slash slash uh, local I think with localhost redirect URL is even okay we, we can put this slash slash localhost uh, port maybe 8000 slash google google slash redirect something like that yeah we're gonna add this URI. that's that's pretty much it that's cool I think do we have anything else now we have it made so that's the client ID and that's the client secret which which we have right so next thing what you could do is in your uh, in your VS code right uh, wait a second I have to place this in that side now so uh, through my this uh, I'll do simply pnpm add dot env right that will basically add this package called dot env to my package and which will, which will actually help me to load this stuff which I'm going to center okay I hope so it's good yeah so which will actually help me to load uh, all the .env files so all the sensitive information of your project should be placed in .env file so I have a client ID which is this one I have a client secret which is this one and if you're thinking of using my my secret and my client id don't worry i'll delete the project <laughs> after the video so yeah i'm sorry so a uh, client id client secret what else do we need okay let's and uh you know we let's delete this api key because we do not need this for now can we or uh yeah we'll be using api keys later on once we once we do the calendar integration right we might create a new one but we'll not think about that for now right so we have the client id we have the client secret set up right uh, in a nice fashion right so we have this guest thing right let's actually copy this and let's close this because you know we can we can continue all our work over here so uh once we got all of these things uh the next thing which we require is basically to to paste these things over here right which we have already done so oh we, we do not have a redirect url so redirect url what's that http http slash slash localhost port 8000 slash uh google slash redirect I think so this was the this was the thing if, if it's wrong we'll see about that later on so the url right so then uh, we'll actually have to work with the scopes right these two are the actual scopes which i need but i do not need the blogger one for sure so i need to specify the scopes but i don't need this first one right and then what we can do is we can say o auth uh, 2 dot uh, generate oh, this is not the one Wait man, wait man, where are, where are you getting this OAuth? Okay, this, this is the OAuth 2. This is OAuth 2 client. We can say OAuth 2 client, right? That's cool. So we can just, we can just, we don't need this. We can just make this, yeah. So we can simply say OAuth 2 client dot uh, generate, uh, I think URL or generate auth URL, something like that. Yeah. So we have the auth URL and what we can do is we can just pass the option. So it's a access type of line, then scope is the scopes which we have decided. So yeah, there you go. This URL basically now could be used for logging in the user. So we will redirect the user to this URL. So there is response that we redirect to this URL, right? Yeah, uh, it's kind of cool. And we'll have to actually set up the uh, app dot uh, Again, again a get url to slash 
google slash redirect which is the place where we'll be redirecting is the port 8000 yeah right so you we, we will be getting a request and a response over here as well so uh, this is how it is and we can just say send it's working yeah right so we'll see uh, about what data do we get i think i will be getting the token and stuff uh, over this redirect thing right so it, it goes like you generate basically generate a url you get the permission from the google google gives you a token you get it back over here a token and a refresh token and a user's profile and you're good to go you can just query anything i, I think you do not get a user profile you know you do have to query that separately but yeah that's how things are basically it's it's not very complex but uh before doing anything else in the package i think there's something called type no it's module yeah that's what we want so it's actually a module and set up some scripts as well so let's set up some dev scripts so which will be nodemon uh, uh src slash index uh dot slash src slash index dot js yeah all right so pnpm add hyphen d nodemon if you don't already know what nodemon is nodemon is basically a library to restart your server every time you make changes to your uh, source code so that's what nodemon is so we have added the nodemon thing so we can say pnpm run dev i believe now oh the server started at port 8000 c so far so good let's actually try to go on this um, but we forgot to do one thing now none of these will be loaded because dot env we haven't we have forget to do that so we'll say uh, import uh, dot env from dot env and just initialize this on top because you know if you, in the future if we'll if you will be importing anything else that will not receive the dot envs okay so we have we have our server successfully restarted that's kind of cool let's actually try this out so let's go to localhost port uh, 8000 slash google oh, that's kind of cool see it redirects us to the google's thing and if we click this we we say okay the google hasn't verified this app you'll have you'll be given access to this app currently being tested you have given access to an app that's currently been developed that invites you if you you should only continue if the if you know the developer invites you oh i'm, I'm fine with this man right so this basically needs now uh, the access to access to uh, my calendars right edit and do everything so if i just continue so it says it works right simple stuff so that's kind of cool and you you get see you get a code and then you get something which i really do not know uh hmm. kind of cool so we can actually say log request dot params let's see what do we, what did it logged it's empty there's no params in this that's true there's no params in this oh but there is params in this ah hmm so code oh this is the code request dot params dot uh, there's no params that's true request dot query i think there's a lot of query in this but we will see so if we just do this we see we do not receive anything okay we we do the so we we get two things one is the scope and another is the code code is actually the token uh you know so we can call like a const token is equal to request dot uh, uh query dot token right that's or code is that what you mean so that's the token right that's the user's token so next up what we have to do is we actually have to uh, take this token and request users information i don't know how to do that for sure so how to request user information with token in google so you okay that's how you do it so
Google's token info endpoint is at this found on the open ID connect. Okay. Uh, that's how you do it. So basically that's how, that's how basically you do it. So if you want users information, you'll have to hit this URL, but yeah, we'll have to add some package to in order to do HTTP request from our own server. Uh, there's something called TS node. No, there's something called node fetch. That's one option. Exios is also another option. Let's try it out Exios. I think that's easier. npm install Exios. Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll import Exios now. Import Exios from Exios, right? And then we can simply say over here that, you know, we want to say const user info is equal to exios dot exios dot what exios dot uh, I believe a get call at this particular stuff and then basically we can we can let's say plus whatever token that we got right and let's see what and let's actually log what what do we got user info dot data okay this this is an async call so this is I, I mean this is asynchronous wait and then I think then I'll get a data <laughs> there's definitely a proper error handling lacking but yeah whatever I uh, will just go to this place again it's not happy with me I think something crashed okay something crashed I don't know what but okay we got a very long list of a lot of stuff okay writable protocol auth what's this url a description and valid value okay ah this i i hate this way of getting users so uh so you know after we got this what's next it's like retrieving access token with a code return oh this is not the access token okay that's kind of it's kind of lame i just did the most stupid thing right so you get a lot of stuff from await oauth oauth to client dot get access token right with the oh this is the code man right so with the code which you received you can actually get the access token you get you can get a lot of stuff from this oh you get this i think this should be an await here there's an await over here right but you still get these things it's kind of funny data data dot then so it's not get access token it's get a token right and which will give you i believe the stuff which you need which is tokens oh man what what on earth is happening so we have the tokens over here so we can we can log in the valid tokens i believe that's kind of cool right so that's actually the tokens which we uh, we'll we'll have let's 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 get rid of these all these stuff which we got so now what we can do is we can just uh, we can just try to make the request again again crashed i believe data dot then is not a function of course data dot then is not a function because it's the the thing has already been resolved right so if you just uh, cut this thing right if you just do this right and if it log this token right that was not making even sense to me but my uh, linter was not happy with me for some reason right again it crashed man what do you need uh What I'm this 
so this basically returns a promise okay okay there's 15 rupees thing going on so that's actually what is this then why will it return a then like that does not even make sense it's so stupid oh, man you you get a you is it, written a promise which also to get token response right so if we await this then this data right data dot what dot then why that then doesn't even make sense okay whatever so get data is this get token is this right um hmm. in the documentation that's how you they have written it uh so that's how you do it let's copy paste the exact code which they have given okay so let's actually try to do it again maybe some in a better way or something at work like how I, so this should this should have done the work right i think so yeah let's see what can we do now oauth2 dot dot get user emit credentials So right so whatever so this is done right so once we have done the uh, this thing so we can do like uh, you have successfully logged in or something like that so, so message uh, you have successfully logged in right so we have uh, we have set up the client credentials then we could have like an app dot uh, get again request to so slash uh, schedule event right so schedule event maybe on the calendars we'll see you know does it actually schedules or like what's the case but schedule event and we can do like request to re response right uh, then the schedule event uh now the schedule event endpoint basically have to schedule an event uh in the oauth or two dot get token info what does that do man dot then info info dot oh see we get all this information about all this stuff that's kind of cool we actually can get email id and email verified and stuff like that from that info which is kind of cool so uh, we don't need this by the way so we'll we'll go and see we'll we'll go and see for Google Calendars API maybe bloggers dot blog which is you can give get various stuff from this so we can say uh, uh, so we can just uh, we can just extract the calendar API through like doing something like this maybe uh, const like const calendar is equal to google dot calendar if this is a function is that how it is version version 3 or a new api key let's generate an api key pretty quickly so here is this and i want an api key again we'll have to uh, make it like we'll have to place it in the dot env file that's that's the api key we have for google calendars so let's go into the dot env thing and paste it and uh, actually uh, let's have the google calendar api uh, 
right or api keys in like let's let me just make it really simple so the api key is there and then what you can do is you can just uh place your api key over here how you do that is like the process dot env dot api key it's, that's how you do it so you have your api key you have your calendar thing set up so now i think you can do a lot of stuff from here schedule event right so you can say you can say that the calendar dot events dot insert right how do you how do you create an event uh it's a blogger thing compute engine get client okay whatever get project id auth google auth uh does that does that actually have a calendars thing that's all okay that's sad google apis google apis for calendar docs okay create events how do you create events if you could tell me node.js yes that's what we need so you say calendar.events.insert this thing you just give the auth and then you give the calendar id and then you basically give the resource whatever so let's actually try to insert something something like anything we do we don't care about what we are inserting right now right so we say just calendar dot insert or calendar dot events dot insert and let's see what does it need it needs a lot of stuff auth we have already provided we do not need an auth for this i think calendar id primary what's primary okay and says the resource it's event and this is the event okay the resource it's it does have a resource or something like that auth we have already provided auth and then request body and that's what all stuff we have we have auth we have key we have fields we have supported attachment send update send notification a request body is that what we are, we are talking about like i think mean, is the request body is the thing color id in description yeah that's that's what we're talking about yeah so let's let's apply a summary summary is basically um, this is a test event right whatever test event right and then we can have a we can have a location oh we do not need a location that's pretty much it we can give a description to this of course some event that is very very important right and maybe we can give a start and then start will have a date time which will be like okay what what how do you, how do you do that man is that is that like a date like uh actually this in this moment i think day js something like that would be very helpful two kilobyte javascript date utility file okay install day js in pnpm so yeah we have added day js in our, in our project i'm saying for day js from day js let's say i want to schedule an event for like uh, something like tomorrow 6 pm right how do you do that so day day js dot dot uh, dot what dot extend dot local dot uh, how do you do use that man how do you use it okay the parse browser parse string set get millisecond hours uh installation installation node.js let's do this in this node.js format uh, date uh yeah dejs dot i can only see i cannot even see format for some reason I think this is due to like uh, this is not what we want to import maybe dejs has got different thing is dejs what 
Oh, we don't care about this. This is this is too annoying to me. Let's let's actually have have it scheduled for a new date. Uh, dot. Oh. So what we can do is we can just uh, I think we can use like day js right something like that we had imported that right oh yeah why did we remove that day js from day js I'm a noob at day js guys I'm a moment user which has been which has been deprecated for some reason you know I I I think it uses something similar right uh, add maybe one uh, day ah that's cool that's the same thing man that's the same thing that's the same how you use day js sorry moment js that's how you use day js that's kind of cool okay we added one day so it has scheduled an event for one day after and that two iso string that's that's i think that's an iso string right i think so that's, that's how it looks like so and time zone is Indian time zone in Indian time zone because that's what where I live in. So now how do you how do you pass it in in Google APIs? What do you time zone API? What's the time zone in which I live in, man? What should I pass in there? Okay, let's see. They have passed Los America, Los Angeles. Uh, it will be India. India, Delhi. <laughs> Is Delhi a time zone? I'm not sure. Uh, list of acceptable API time zones. Yeah, that's, that's kind of cool. Okay. Africa, do I, can I find in India over here? Asia, Asia. Oh, Asia. Asia. I don't see in India over here, man. That's kind of sad. Okay, we have India. So we have Congo reunion, Christmas, whatever. What, 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 what all? Of, man, what should I pick it? Pick from here. Congo's Indian. No, I don't want Indian. I want India. Hmm. Oh, let, let's do this. I mean, we'll have all these time for some reason. Exact Indian time zone, we'll, we'll see. We'll see later on. Right. Oh, got it. Asia, Kolkata. That's, that's exactly what we need. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Oh, see? 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 We found it. Right? Okay. So... Okay, what else do we need? We need a references. I don't know. Re reoccurrences. There's no reoccurrences. Attendees. I'm the attendee, I think. Uh, if I'm scheduling, I don't know. Maybe. Reminders. Uh, no, I don't need this. Okay, so can I? Can this be uh, done? Uh, does it, is it like an, uh, a promise? I gave the promise, whatever. Okay, so it's a promise. So we can say await. So we do get a result out of this. I'm pretty sure about this. So what does the result contains? It contains data, it contains header, whatever. Okay. We don't need the results if there's no error over here, right? So if it doesn't throw an error, that means we are good to go. We'll say response.send message done, right? So this is like how it is. So we'll have to first authenticate ourselves. Let's check our server has restarted or not properly. Yeah, it has properly restarted. So first thing first, let's go and log in to Google first, right? So we'll, we'll have all things set up. Yeah, we have logged in successfully. Next thing we have to do is we'll have to remove all these and we'll have to do uh, schedule 
event wow it 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 kind of it kind of crashed okay login required man so i've given you the api keys right what do you need from me login required uh man okay I'm logged in, right? I I just set the auth credentials. What, do, what else do you need, man? Hmm. Login required. Google. Uh... Means that token you are using is either expired or invalid. As a state of the form, you need to get the refresh token. Man, why do I need? Are you, are you, are you crazy? Oh, yeah. Do we need to set it again over here, man? That could not be the case, right? Uh, I mean, here we pass all. And so, uh, right. So we can pass process.env dot uh, API key, which I think we have already configured this. I don't know why again and again it's asking for the same thing. And what if like I pass uh, I set the token over here, right? So if I just say const, I no, I, see what I'm doing right now does not make sense to me. Like why would I do this? But let's let's see. Like is that if that is the issue, you know? Well, that's how we'll be solving it. So token is equal to Wait, what's what do you mean by tokens? We have a lot of them. Hmm. So we we have given the auth key, right? That's that's the auth key, and I think we have logged in. Uh, how to check whether we are logged in or not? So we can check like if uh, uh, log stuff up. O auth. Two dot no not not what two what two what plan end dot uh uh dot credentials dot access token yeah if if we have the access token that means you know that's that's kind of like an indication that we are good to go right so we'll have to log in again because there's no state to this. Okay, and then we have to go schedule. Let's see, -E schedule event. It simply said login required. Let's see what does it log on the top. It does have an API token, man. Why is the login required? What kind of like, what do you need more from me, man? What is login required? We have already. How do you login required? Uh, uh, simple uh, set access token. Do we have to separately set the access token for the calendars? That's the question which I would ask. Calendar dot. Okay, but mm. where's the auth? What is this auth thing which you have placed? Okay, does does this auth takes anything else like This auth to client. Oh, this this does take an auth to client. That's kind of cool. So auth to client. If I just pass that client, ah, oh, that works. See, that works. That's kind of cool. Okay. So if that works, that means you know we should be good to go, right? So that's okay. We can just try this again. So we can say Google. We are logged in, and now we can just try to maybe just do it like schedule. 
event ah what google apis does not use project this enable it by visiting this place then retry your if you enable this api recently oh i did not man i did not <laughs> i haven't even ena enabled this api that's kind of <laughs> stupid right i haven't even enabled google calendar's api and i'm trying to visit this thing up okay okay enable uh Please don't ask for my credit card information because I have that. I do not have that right now. Ah, I didn't ask. That's kind of cool. Okay, we have enabled this. We have, this thing is enabled. Uh, so we can try this again, I think. We'll restart our server for that. Just, you know, npm run dev. No, pnpm run dev. Right. Uh, we have restarted the server and let's actually try it again right now. So could you kind of first of all log in? Okay, logged in pretty successfully. And then schedule event. S C H E D U L E schedule event. Ah uh, oh now the error is actually better. The you know, the error is like bad request. So we are like so the request is bad. What is missing, man? Why why is it okay? domain global required missing and oh there's no end time oh that's correct yeah so let's pass an end time to this so pass this and there's like an end time maybe the same thing just add we'll add one more r to this so the same time zone pretty much the same stuff um we'll just uh we'll say that dot add one R. right so it, it will be basically in one hour event so that's, that's what we want so kind of cool so ah uh, let's do it again man logging in again and again and again that makes me sick okay uh yeah google uh went to google let's see what does it have it basically logs us in and now we can schedule an event I Pretty sure about it. Schedule event. Please no error. Whoa, it's done. It's done. I, I, it's done. Like, let's see. Let's let's have a look whether this that they actually got scheduled on our Google calendars or not. So let's let's that's the time for it's time for actually uh, seeing the was it done or not. Oh man, can you see that? Can you see that? I scheduled that using my code. This is a test event. Can you imagine this? That's kind of, that's dope, that's dope. Just use, don't use my token, it's on the screen, I get it. Just don't use it. See? okay the next target is actually to schedule a google meet google meet event with this particular whatever this event is right so we did it some event that is very important very very important okay let's get rid of that let's get rid of that and it's kind of cool okay so it does work for sure it does work for sure we can actually schedule events and it's cool but can we let's see but can we okay mm, add drive attachments to the which we don't want to do we, oh we can add wait we can add this ah huh. but google drive okay a uh, 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 solution a uh, gapis client uh, okay what's that Con add video and ha, that's what we want to do add a video and phone conference to the event that's what we want to do so what do you do is basically you say uh, event data conference data dot conference solution get uh, we don't care about this we don't care about this uh, you basically say 
dot patch dot events dot patch calendar id event id how do you schedule an event man uh, does not make sense even you can associate hangouts and google meet to conferences to allow your users to meet remotely we yeah yeah that's what we want the conference data field can be used for to read and copy and clear existing conferences detail it can also be used to request generation of new conferences to allow creation and modification conferences such conference data request parameter to one conference data version request parameter to one if there are three types of conference data currently supported as denoted by conference data dot conference data dot key dot type hangouts for customers event hangouts classic hangouts for google workspaces use dedicated event name Actual hangouts meet okay that's kind of cool you can learn which conference type is supported by, for any given calendar by use of use by looking at the current uh, allowed list okay okay what is the front end code i want node code man how do you how do you add a oh do you do, do we have anything like conference or such thing conference data version one It says uh, if we we won't do that if you say you know if to one so it suppose basically three types of conference data to learn you can learn which conference type is supported by any given calendar to use by looking at the calendar uh, calendar properties allowed in the calendars and calendar list collection but we do not okay okay so you basically say calendar event patch conference data create request request id this but this does not talk about how to create it like uh, oh but this does not talk about how to create it for conference like, like is there anything related to conference no we have i've already used it okay max attendees attendees okay let's say i want to add it me as an attendee right so i i just uh I just say I want to add me as an attendee. Uh, how do you add attendees? I just forget that. So you must just say attendees. Okay, that's how you do it. Kind of cool. Okay, I think here we can have like conference data. Ah, there you go. There you go. There you go. That's how you do it. So you can actually add a conference data. Inside the conference data, you could have a create request request id something like that how how do you how do you generate a request id so you can create a new conference for an event manager with a newly generated request id which can be a random string okay so i could say uh, I, I could i could use an uuid something like uuid for this particular purpose which is kind of great so i can say pnpm install uuid uuid is a very cool library which basically helps you to generate unique user ids not user ids mind any kind of id why am I doing it over here? I have to let's import uh, something from UUID, and what we want to import is version four as UUID. Okay, so we have the UUID, and now what we can do is we can just say uh, create request request ID, and then this UUID thing, which I could call it. Then you just that's pretty much it. There you go. And I can add attendees to this. I'm pretty sure. How, how do you do that? So you basically go over here and you say attendees. And I can just say uh, attendees, I think, array of uh, this. Uh, hmm. No, 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 no. It's not like that. Okay. So attendees is actually an array. That's correct. But it's like email. And then you actually can specify like what. So let's say I want to invite my original email ID right so which is this one an email id right 
and then what we can do is we can just uh, we can just we can just do this so we have gmail.com right as an attendee right so right now if we just we just try to schedule an event what will happen let's let's try it out so we have this this thing over here okay so uh yeah <laughs> log back in again <laughs> we have logged in okay uh, the next step which we have to do is we have to schedule our event which is what we want to do Ah, oh, done man done let's see what was a was a google meet something like that was created or not so we have a test event and it does have a google meet associated with that that's kind of sick dude that that's insane that we have done it finally so i think that was the purpose of this video like that's that's all the purpose how could you schedule a google meet interview and an event with google apis so the process if i could conclude it goes something like you'll have to generate a token and with that token you'll have to set up that as a credential right so like what we have done over here and uh, you know through that credential you can pretty much take anything from this google apis right so i have taken calendar right so but you can pretty much take anything calendar or any api you can just go and search and basically you'll be having that and then you can use that api in order to pretty much do anything that's kind of very cool right i also feel the same yeah. so uh, that was i think it from this video i don't know could we i think this like but just by passing various parameters you could pretty much do anything with this and uh I hope so you found this helpful. Uh, by the way, I just want to test one thing. Did I also got this uh, on my calendar? Uh, did, I, did I also uh, got this on my calendar? Let's see. Uh, that will be a thing if I also got this. But, but I don't want this. I wanted this month view of this. But wait. Ah. Uh, I have a meeting there. That's kind of cool. One guest awaiting. You can see that. That's kind of cool. So we we basically can schedule a, a event with both of us. And there you go. That's that's it. Have a very great day ahead, and I wish you a very happy new year, which is really coming, which is really near. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye bye.